All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Adele Spragan, who is in a, I think, a little damper Ontario and Canada. How are you doing, Adele? I'm doing great. Yes, we're having a rainfall here, so I wish I was in sunny San Diego. Uh, and Adele is a behavior change expert, award-winning author, international speaker, and trainer. Um, you were awarded the 2020 Woman of Inspiration Award and 2021 recognized Top Behavioral Expert of the Year. And what we're going to talk about today is your brain. Your brain is making decisions on your behalf. And here's how to upgrade it to make better choices. Um, I it's such a great, just such a great topic. So, um, Adele, let's let's go straight into it. When you say your brain is making decisions on your behalf, it sounds like that you're not in control of what your brain is doing. That's right. Most of our decisions are originate in the subconscious regions of our brain, so deep below the conscious awareness, and it's there that those decisions start. And then our conscious mind just catches up and is along for the ride, basically. So we think we're in control of every decision we make, but what we need to do is we need to address the underlying patterns that are making those decisions for us. So if people out there are making the same mistake over and over and over again, and you're asking yourself why, that is why. You have a pattern in your brain that is originating in the subconscious that is actually choosing for you. So what is it? So how is your subconscious? I mean, what is what is informing those patterns and your subconscious to make those decisions? It must be coming from somewhere. Yeah, great question. So when the human brain isn't born with patterns, when we enter this world, we very quickly piece together the actions that we take are going to take in the future based on situations that occur when we're little. So when we're young, growing up, our brain is very quickly manifesting all of those patterns within itself. And then it is those patterns that make those decisions for you. So all of those sales, if we're talking about sales, right? When mm -hmm. you grow up, all of those sales decisions that you encountered, they formed in your brain a pattern. And it's those, those patterns that continue to move you into how you're going to do your particular sales conversation or how you feel about sales. So if you have a pattern in your brain that says, oh my gosh, I'm not a salesperson, like that's pushy or that doesn't feel comfortable. Thank you, you can thank your patterns for that. You can thank your brain for that. And trying to push through that and make that, take that action anyway, it's not very effective because the brain wants you to take that same decision again and again and again. That is safety according to the brain. Mm, that's that's fascinating. So, um, so basically, then you're taking patterns, things that you um, observed or learned uh, when you were younger. Because, yeah, I mean, let's face it. I mean, we were talking about sales we're bombarded since an early age of saying like sales is bad. Sales people are, as you say, used car salesmen. All the um, popular culture is always like you know the the bad salesperson. So it's kind of no wonder that if you end up because a lot of people default into the sales profession so number one you might have come That's into it. a profession that you actually wanted to be in and second off you've got all these negative uh, voices that's right and you're also speaking into those negative voices so remember that that person that you're trying to sell sell to they have made bad decisions in the past that they have regretted and so anytime somebody goes to pitch something to that person, it is that pattern that's getting triggered in their brain. And so they just want to run away from some people, I'm not saying everybody, some people just want to run away from that sales conversation. So to recognize mm -hmm. that, oh, yeah, the human brain is a play here. And those incidents from the past are actually influencing how people feel about this particular conversation today. That's really helpful, because it mm -hmm. allows the salesperson to speak into that. And to say, you know, if they can see that the person is becoming uncomfortable, to actually address it up front and say, hey, looks like you're a little uncomfortable with the sales conversation. How are you feeling about this? Now, patterns right. are emotional based. And that's why I said, how are you feeling about this? Because you want to get the person in touch with their emotions rather than trying to play with the logical, rational mind. 
Yeah. So how do you start to get people to uh, be conscious of, of their emotions? I mean, I, I feel like it's almost harder nowadays because we live in this whole kind of avoidance culture or this shortcut or this distraction culture where we're constantly like distracting ourselves and we're never ever really spending a lot of time with our own thoughts. Yes, absolutely. You know, that it, it is tricky, like to get people to address their emotions. Um, using emotion based language, like, hey, how are you feeling right now? Giving permission marketing. I'm sure you guys talk about that, like permission sales, asking sure. the person before you start the conversation, hey, you know, I'm going to do this for you and tell you this information and teach you all about this. And then you'll have a decision to make. Either way is okay with me. Make sure you throw that in. Like you don't mind mm -hmm. which decision the person's making. That will help sure. them to relax. And then before you go into the sales conversation, ask them how they're feeling. So, you know, how are you feeling about what I just said? Keep that emotion based language and try to get them focus more on their their body than on their mind. OK, so emotions are body based sensations. So, you know, how are you feeling? Is this good? Like, you know, is your heart singing right now? Anything that, that makes them think about their body language is good. Mm -hmm. And then um, what about uh, being aware of triggers? Because I think triggers are, are, it's something that kind of fascinates me. Because again, like you said, I mean, we carry these things through our life and we can get triggered very easily. You know, in a conversation, you might be sitting around a table having a, a, a meeting with some people, everything is going well. And then somebody says something or looks at you in a particular way and suddenly it just triggers something mm -hmm. that you don't know. And now you're feeling kind of defensive. Exactly. So let me tell you what a pattern is. A pattern can be recognized by an intertwined physical sensation, emotion, thought. And that's what John's talking about here. They are not logical. <laughs> Your patterns are not logical. Okay. The brain is not a logical. Uh, it doesn't work on logic. It actually works on emotion base first. So somewhere in your past, that person you have created a pattern that that person just triggered in your brain. And that's the reaction you're having. It's actually got nothing to do with the present moment. Okay. So knowing that allows you to take control of that situation internally first. It's to say, okay, I know I'm overreacting here, but this is happening internally in me. And recognize mm -hmm. how you're feeling. Oh, I'm feeling really rejected. Okay, great. Now you can start to address that. You know, the, the results is remarkable. Like I've worked with people who have um, started off with really strong anti-selling patterns and they mm -hmm. really don't want to sell at all. They won't even network. They won't do anything of the sort because they're just so an anxious about the entire topic. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying, John, most of us get uh, sales is not our profession right like there are people yeah. out there who are great salespeople, and sales is their profession but for most people they have a business they then have to sell right and so yes, it's yes. not uncommon for people to feel very anxious about it so mm -hmm. i've worked with these people who start off really reluctant to sell and they end up loving it like absolutely loving it because when you when you know how to sell effectively and how to work through those patterns that are stopping you then sales becomes a joy i mean it really is because mm -hmm. it's just a conversation and you'll yes. do it just as a conversation but it's tricky to get past those patterns first yeah. Um, no, I, I absolutely, absolutely agree with you. And, and, and the other part of it too is, is if you start to sort of relax and start to believe or understand that your role is to help people, really, that's what it says. It's about helping people. It's about seeing whether what you're, what you're, what you're offering can actually solve a, a an, an issue or a, or a, um, an obstacle or a meet an opportunity, but it's a really great thing. But as you said, is we've never been taught that, you know, we've been taught the other. So you kind of have to adapt to that yourself or adopt that yourself. And one of the interesting things I worked, uh, I, I ran a company a number of years back. It was a global sales consultancy. And sometimes in really big organizations, we'd work with global organizations, you know, they'd say, oh, we're doing the sales training. Yeah, no, we don't call our people salespeople. Mm -hmm. And they would tell you they have this lovely, you know, title for them or whatever. And I would say, that's fantastic. We can do that. And I said, but I will, I will just say, make one comment. Your customers know you're a salesperson. You can call yourself whatever the heck, whatever you want. They know you're a salesperson. So I don't see the value in it. I think you're better off being the best salesperson you can be. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And you can be the best salesperson you can be, even if you've had 
even if you've never had any exposure to sales, or even if your exposure to sales has been something negative in the past mm -hmm. where you've you've absolutely blown that conversation and want to run away like crazy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Your brain has what is called plasticity and those patterns can be rewired. They can be upgraded mm -hmm. and they can be transformed. And that's the beauty of the human brain. We are not stuck with any behavior that we adopted in the past. We can adapt and we can change, but you need to know how. So repatterning mm -hmm. is a way to rewire your brain so that you're comfortable in those sales conversations. And I just want to say this, John, it yes. is yes. just a conversation. Like we have all these scripts when it comes to sales. I remember when I took sales training well before I did what I did before, what I do now. And somebody gave me a whole thing of paper that I was supposed to follow. And if the person says this, then you say this. And mm -hmm. Here's how to deal with this objection and then go to this line. And I was so anxious about reading this sheet that I couldn't even listen to what the person is was saying. Right. Right. So sales mostly is about listening. It's mostly mm -hmm. about really leaning in and hearing, as John's saying, is this person the right person for me? <clears throat> and that's a very different question than how can I sell this product to this yeah. person? Is this person somebody that I want as a client? And to position yeah. yourself like that is really empowering. Yeah, and and when you're having and when you're having um, conversations, as you said, as a sales conversation, the listening is so important. But here's one of the greatest like uh, compliments you can give to somebody is when you're is when you're asking the questions, they're they're answering. You're asking fo follow up questions. You're listening, and then you say, "Let me let me just make sure I understand what you said. I just want to be clear." That's that's that is that is a compliment to you because that means to the, to the other person that you respect them that you want to understand what they're doing. But if you're too in your own head and thinking about what you're going to say next, you're going to miss those opportunities. Yes, for sure, for sure. So sales is a pattern, money is a pattern, conversations are a pattern. Our our human brain is what is called a pattern maker. We have no choice but to create patterns. Um, you know, the, it's been called a pattern and instinct. I think that's a really good label for it, but it's also mm -hmm. hugely adaptable. So mm -hmm. if you have conversations in your past that are stopping you today from having those sales calls, then it's hugely empowering to know that your brain can adapt and change. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is the hard part of this is, is I think, I think, people find it hard to believe that they can actually rewire their brains or that their brains are, are have come plasticity. Uh, so maybe just talk about that a little bit, because I think, I think sometimes people don't believe or think, yeah, it sounds great, but you know, can I really do that? Yeah. So I'll, I'll quickly go through what I teach as a four step yeah. technique so that if somebody is struggling with sales can see exactly how they would apply it. So the first thing to, notice is that if you're anxious in a conversation we'll take anxiety but it could be anything um to recognize that that is a pattern so a pattern is an intertwined physical sensation emotion thought and step one is to identify that pattern so how am i feeling where am i feeling that and what thought is going through my head so it might be oh i notice my stomach's clenched my emotion is anxious and my thought is i suck at sales perfect you've just identified yeah. a pattern the next step is to own that as a pattern. So you feel like it's actually part of the situation that you're in. But if you can flip that switch and go, okay, I have a pattern in my brain that is responding like that. Now you're going to be much mm -hmm. more empowered. So how you do that is you're just going to gently say to yourself, I created that. Okay. Step three is to deconstruct that pattern. It is a neural pathway in your brain. And I'd really like you to picture it like that, right? We've all seen pictures mm. of the brain where you get an electrical charge that runs down a neural pathway. That electrical charge moving down that neural pathway is why you are feeling anxious and why you are thinking the way you're thinking. That's it. If you can tease up that neural pathway apart and snap it into different channels, you will feel and think extremely differently. OK, mm. so you're going to deconstruct that pattern in my book, which is free. You can get it on my website. There is how to do that. It's too I can't explain it in the time we have, sure. but it is a simple step once you know how to do it. OK, and then the fourth step is where you're going to upgrade that pattern and create a new one. Only then you have to remove the old pattern first before you can upgrade it. Now, the results, are, like I said, are remarkable. 
you know, I, I worked with one woman, she is now selling three of her programs every single day, not a problem. She talks to at least 10 people a day and she closes at a 30% uh, rate. Very simple to do once you know how to have a proper conversation, which is what John teaches, and then how mm -hmm. to remove those patterns that are blocking you from having those conversations, which is what repatterning can do for you. Mm -hmm. So... So I was going to say, so the, 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 the first best step really is awareness. It's like paying Absolutely. attention uh, and, and taking the time and putting aside the distractions and actually say, I'm going to pay attention. Because like you said, I mean, you have all of these things, physiological, mental, all of that that goes on. But paying attention to saying, yes, I can see there's changes in my thinking, there's changes in my body, there's all of this. Why is this happening? Yes, exactly. We spend so, way too much time trying to avoid when we feel uncomfortable rather than trying mm -hmm. to identify when we feel uncomfortable, right? When we're often taught, oh, just think positive or, oh, just push through that or just, just keep going, you know, get past your comfort zone. That doesn't work very well because that pattern is, is in your brain and it just keeps firing the same messages over and over again. In fact, if you are trying to avoid that conversation, if you are trying to avoid that feeling, it will come back stronger and stronger and stronger, which is why many people move from just feeling anxious to having panic attacks. It's because that mm. will not be ignored. OK, so turn inwards instead. What happens is this emotions are like a crest of a wave. So think about how a wave comes up and then it comes over and then it comes down the other side. That's exactly what will happen. At first, that anxiety will feel like it's growing. <gasps> But if you stay with it and you just keep observing it, it'll crest and then it'll come down and then you will stop mm. feeling it. So that's one very quick way, just a quick tip to get you through a conversation. If you're starting to feel anxious, just turn your attention inwards and just watch that wave come up and then it'll come down the other side and then you'll be back mm. able to lean in and listen. It does take practice, so we'll try and practice it, but it is helpful quickly. And then, like I said, remove the pattern that is causing the anxiety. Mm -hmm. And and part of that too is then what we say to ourselves, right? Um, because I think there's some statistic like what 87% of our self-talk is negative. So, I mean, also we said the awareness about everything, but also awareness about what we're saying to ourselves. Yeah, but, but recognize the thought is the last piece of the pattern that comes on board. Mm -hmm. So all thought is given by a pattern in your brain. Mostly we believe our thoughts way too much, okay? So I, I don't believe my thoughts at all. They're just thoughts. They just come and go. They just float in the air, I like to say, okay? Mm -hmm. They're riding in on the back of the pattern. So don't spend so much time in the thinking mind. You're better off getting into the feeling body. That's where the pattern is mm -hmm. originating. Anything you're feeling, you will notice that the thought just follows. Okay, so if you're feeling anxious, right. you'll notice that you're having anxious thoughts. That is natural. That is how patterns work. So don't try right, right, right. thinking. Try and change your feeling. Yeah, very good. That's um, an excellent, excellent. Uh, ex um, and then, and then, just uh, as as people start to go through a process like this, sometimes it's you know we start on something and then, you know, we get highly motivated to do it, but then, you know, it takes a little bit of work. So we dip a little bit. Um, how do we continue ourselves to just do this work and break through? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you can't, you have to have a pattern in order to repattern. Okay. So right. the, um, mm -hmm. you've, you've got to be patient with yourself as you learn something new. So that is true put little motivators and little reminders everywhere all over the place until you build that habit. Um, but here's the thing. We swim in a world of blame and shame. We swim in a world of blame and mm. shame because we are not taught that you are not in control, that your subconscious is actually leading the, the dance steps. We beat ourselves up way too much because we are not taught that our subconscious is in control. As soon as you recognize that your subconscious is in control, you will stop trying to change you and you will start right. trying to change how the subconscious is working. You will become more curious about what is going on internally and less judgmental about what you are doing externally. 
Okay. Mm. That's a best first step is just to get curious. Start blaming yourself. Start saying to yourself, okay, this isn't going the way I want it to go, but this is a pattern in my brain that is causing me to take me to take me in this direction. Get curious about what that pattern is. Stop judging yourself so harshly and start to just take those incremental little steps that will lead to massive changes. This has been fantastic. All of Adele's information will be below this video. Um, but I love that. I, lo I love that about just the, the awareness piece and, and taking time. And I think that's such an, an antidote to a lot of what's going on in the world today is if we were just a little bit more aware and aware of ourselves first. You know, let's be aware of ourselves and instead of like worrying about everything externally all the time. Um, but before we go, Adele, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, so I'm a behavior change expert. That's what I do. I help people to change behaviors. I work with many entrepreneurs and independent sales agents. Um, you can get me on my website. My thought leadership is at adelsbragan.com. And if you want a copy of my book, which teaches you how to repattern your brain, you can get it at shift4steps.com. And I'm sure John will put that in the notes and it's free. Yep. I give that to you. So yeah, please don't, don't be stuck with any sales patterns that are not working for you. Grab the book and get rewiring that um, brain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go get the book. Uh, give yourself every advantage. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm a big believer in it. So as, as Adele said, everything will be below here. So go check it out and re rewire those patterns. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Adele. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you.